Well, hello, everybody. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, and hope, uh, uh, well, I know I'm looking forward to Christmas coming. We're already in December. Uh, we're starting a new series of studies in our new book. And if I haven't got you your book, I'll definitely have it to you by Sunday. But I uh, hope you'll get in, into this new book. Our new series of lessons is on real life emotions. And we're going to be starting with the first one is dealing with grief. You know, um, have you ever watched a movie and it brought you to tears, got you to cry? Now, I know most of you girls out there would say yes to that question. And most of you boys out there would probably say no, but no one you really have. You know, I'm not uh, afraid to admit uh, movies have brought me to tears. Uh, Old Yellow. Uh, I don't know if anybody watched Old Yellow out there. It's an older movie. Uh, some of you may not even be familiar with it, but it was a good movie. And I remember seeing it as a kid and even as an adult, and it brought tears to your eyes when uh, you uh, see that movie. And there's other movies that will bring tears to your eyes, and that's what movies do. They get you involved. As you get into the movie, you get involved with the character, and you become uh, e empathizing with the character, and you start putting your place yourself in the character's place and and the next thing you know you're feeling the emotions they're feeling and and uh and you're experiencing what they experience is emotional wise because it draws you in that's what movies they they create them to do that to get your attention to get you drawn in and, and get yourself lost in that movie so to speak but when it's over Usually it's over. You know, you, you've recovered. Uh, you may have been crying. You may have felt grief. You may have felt their pain emotional wise. But after the movie's over, 20, 30 minutes later, you're talking to your friends and everything's good. And, and, and the, the sorrow or the pain, the emotional pain is gone. But that's not how it is in real life, is it? When we have real life situations, they stay with us. They tend to uh, last a little longer than that. They you know, when we grieve, when we lose a loved one, when we uh, uh, lose um, friendships, you know, when things happen in our life that bring us sorrow and grief and pain, it tends to stay with us longer. But, you know, we don't have to suffer alone. And that's what our lesson is about today. The point of our lesson is God responds to our sorrow with grace and compassion. So God is there with us when we're going through these trials and troubles. If we just learn to call upon him and you know we're going to be looking at psalms 116 right here but if you ever get into a position where you're grieving you're hurting you're you you're in sorrow you you uh, you're down uh you're frustrated psalms is a good place to go in the bible because there's a lot of wisdom there and there's a lot of uh uh the lot that the psalmist writes is about suffering about how he's uh, search for God and about how he's found God in his sufferings and and so when we go to Psalms we can we can see how other people have handled it and we can see how the psalmist writes about it you know I'd love to be able to write as well as uh, uh, the psalmist did in God's word and be able to express my feelings like uh, they have Lord uh, but I, I'm I don't be I'm not uh, the type that's able to write that down but I love to read other people's writings like this because it helps me to express myself through their writings and helps me to understand things. So that's what we're going to be looking at today is Psalms 116. And the psalmist is dealing with uh, how God has dealt, uh, helped him through his troublesome times. So let's go ahead and get in Psalms uh, 116. We'll start with 1 through 4. And I'll go ahead and read that. I love the Lord because he has heard my appeal for mercy, because he has turned his ear to me. I will call out to him as long as I live. The ropes of death were wrapped around me, and the torments of Sheol overcame me. I encountered trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. Psalmist starts out in, in 116 by saying, I love the Lord. He was proclaiming his love for God, and he had a reason to proclaim, pro, proclaim his love for God, and that's because he had experienced God. When he was in times of trials and troubles, he knew God and, and he experienced God. And the reason he says that there, he says, I love the Lord because, as he says here, I heard my appeal. No, because he heard has heard my appeal for mercy and because he has turned his ear to me. And he is saying that God hears me. 
when I've been in suffering times, when I've been in trials and tribulations, and I've called out to God, he hears me. He had heard me then. He hears me now. You know, whether the psalmist was going through a difficult situation at this right at time of his writing this, or whether he had been through a difficult situation and is writing about his experience with God, either way, he knows that God hears him. God heard him then, and he knows that God hears him now if he's going through trouble now. And he said, I cried out and and, and heard God, and he, I appealed for a mercy, and he heard me. Uh, he ha He's turned his ear towards me. He turned his ear to me. In other words, he knew that God was a part of his life and that God was there with him in the midst of the storm that he had gone through or is going through. He says, I will call out to him as long as I live. He learned a life lesson here. He learned a life lesson that God is with me always. And I can always call upon him no matter how long I live. Uh, and, and that's what uh, he's writing about here, that that I've suffered in the past. God was with me. I may be suffering now. God's with me. And I know that when suffering comes along in the future, God is with me if I call out to him. All we got to do is call out to him. That's where a lot of us make mistakes. We don't turn to God. We turn to alcohol. We turn to drugs. We turn to uh, sex. We turn to other things instead of turning to God and waiting on his get, uh, talking and dealing with us. But he says, I'll, I'll call him as long as I live. And then he talks about the ropes of death were wrapped around me. He said he was going through troubles that was, uh, was close to death. He had had trials where... He may have been sick and close to death. He may have been wounded and close to death. But he was he knew that he had been there and, and the, the ropes of death had wrapped around him. And, it, and the torments of Sheol had overcome him. And Sheol, we know, is uh, is, is like uh, the Old Testament word for hell or, or suffering. And, and he knew he had been there. He'd been close to that. And, you, and, and have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt where things were just miserable in your life? And things were just going bad, and, and, and you just couldn't see how you could get out of that situation. You know, sometimes that happens when a loved one passes, and, and we don't know that life will ever be worth living again, you know, and, and, or, 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 or we get sick, or, or things may be happening with uh, other people in our lives, and, and divorce or separation, or our parents divorce, or, or, separate and and then you know we just don't see how it could get better but yet we if we call upon god as the psalmist found out here he'll get us through it it will get better it may not ever be the same again but it can get better and we can realize and come to the conclusion that life is worth living especially if you live it with god he says i encounter trouble and sorrow he, he, it wasn't something that the Psalms was not writing about something he didn't know anything about. He had been there. He had felt the pains. He had felt the sorrow. He had felt close to death. He had felt close to, to hell, to uh, the, the just torments of life that, that was racking his, his body or his mind at that time. But he knew he could call out to someone that could do something about it. That's where he says again, then I called on the name of the Lord. And he simply said, Lord, save me. He knew that he couldn't do nothing to save himself. He knew that he had exhausted everything he probably knew to do for the situation that he was going through, and he could not do anything about it. He could not make it better in his own power. So he come to the conclusion, I call, then I called in the name of the Lord and just simply said, Lord, save me. And that's all God wants us to do, to come to him, to take our troubles to him, to share our lives with God and to, to, to be in that relationship that God created us to be in to start with anyway. And that's the relationship between us and him. And, uh, I don't know if the film jump there y'all because it stopped on my side but hopefully uh you heard what i was saying about you know god the the psalmist called upon the name of the lord and that's where he went for his uh comfort 
he went to God. He fi he took it to God. He may have tried everything else, but he took it to God. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and go to Psalms 116, 5 through 9. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is compassionate. The Lord guides the inexperienced. The Lord guards the inexperienced. I was helpless, and he saw saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, rescued me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Now the psalmist, as I said, as I said was continuing the thoughts that he mentioned there in verses 1 through 4. And it was a continuing thought about why he knew he could turn to God. First, he, he uh, expounded on God's character traits. He knew that God was the one to go to because he says there in the first, God's gracious. God is going to uh, give us that grace. He's going to forgive us. He's going to uh, protect us. He's going to uh, help us even when we may have turned our backs on him in the past. He still loves us. He still reaches out to us. And he's always got an open hand to us if we just turn to him. So God is gracious in uh in, in, in dealing with us and, and full of grace. Uh, you know, grace is what, what we say of God's unmerited favor. Nothing we deserve for it, you know, but God gave it to us anyway. That's God's grace. And that's how gracious God is. And it's also, it says God is righteous. You know, God is uh, the uh, righteous one. We can always count on him doing what's right because he's not going to go against his nature. He's going to do the right thing. He's always going to do the right thing. Now we may not always know what that right thing is to do. We may, we you know, we may uh, judge others about being righteous or not. Uh, we may even judge God in our own minds about God that wasn't fair. But God's going to do what's righteous. God's going to do what's right. Uh, so we can always count on God because He is righteous. That's another character trait of God. And the third He mentions here, God's compassionate. And we know God's compassionate because we've seen it in his scripture. How about, uh, I think it's yeah, John 11, is it 5 or 5, 35? John 11, 35, shortest uh, verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus had compassion even when he knew death had no uh, victory. He knew that death couldn't hold Lazarus. He knew that when Lazarus died, he knew where Lazarus was at. He knew he'd see him again. But he had compassion on all those who were weeping and crying for Lazarus because they didn't know that. They wasn't sure of that. Jesus was. But Jesus had compassion on those around him, and he wept with them. And that's the way God is. God has compassion on us. He knows that uh, where we're going. He knows that we're going to make mis mistakes, that we're going to turn our backs on him at times. We're going to do wrong things. He knows we're doing that. But he still has compassion on us and still willing to stay with us and to keep wooing us and to keep uh, luring us and to keep uh, dealing with us so that we can come back to him because of his compassion, graciousness, and righteousness. He's always going to deal with us and give us the opportunities to come to him. Then the psalmist goes on to say, the Lord God guards the inexperienced. You know, God takes care of the helpless. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I know I can look back on my life and I can see many times where I deserved a lot more trials and troubles that I brought on myself than I ever got. I, there's times I knew that I was wrong and I did wrong and I deserved the punishment and yet I didn't get it. God takes care of the inexperienced. He guards the inexperienced. Sometimes we just don't know what we're doing when we think we do. And God can and will help us through those times and keep us from doing more damage than already has been done. And there's many times we could do a far more damage than we've done. How many times have you thought, thank you, Lord, that it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be? Or it wasn't bad as it should have been. Or it wasn't bad as it could have been. You've ever been into a, a wreck and came out unscratched. God's blessing you. God's taking care of you. And he saved me. He says, I was helpless and he saved me. The psalmist knew that he couldn't do nothing about his situation. He had to cry out to God. And, you know, there's times when, you know, we, we try as we might. We can't do anything about some, certain situations. We have no control over what other people say and do and think. 
And sometimes they say and do and think things that hurt us. And we have no control over that, but we do have control of how we respond and we do have control of who we go to. And we need to take it to God and help and pray that God will help us to deal with these situations. Psalmist knew he was helpless and he cried out to God to save him. He said, God saved me. Even in my helplessness, God saved me. He said, return to my rest, so so, for the Lord has been good to you. In other words, he knows that God has taken care of his needs, that, God, that even in the midst of this storm, that he can feel the peace that God gives in the midst of the storm. He could, he could get the rest that he needs, even though he may still be going through the storm. You know, God sometimes lets us to go through the storms in life, but when we lean upon him, they don't seem as bad, and we can have a peace even when the storms are raging around us. And that's the way I think that God was... The psalmist was talking about here where he says, He returned to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord is good, has been good to you. He knows that God's going to take care of it. He knows that no matter what happens, he's in God's hands. And, you know, that's the way we should be in our lives. No matter what's coming, no matter what's happening, we know we're going to be in God's hands. And eventually we know we're going to be with God. So the worst thing that can happen here on this earth is death. But then after death, we're with God. I mean, we're with God now, but we're with, with him uh, in the spirit at that point, too. Because as Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So it's even better when we're with God. Uh, For you, Lord, rescued me from death, talking about the trials and troubles he was in, my eyes from tears, you know, uh, and my feet from stumbling. In other words, it's going to get better. Yes, we, uh, the psalmist was at a point near death, and he knows that God rescued him. His eyes was tears, his trials and troubles, uh, sorrows, uh, grief, crying. And didn't, you know, there comes times when you think you'll never quit crying because of grief or sorrow. But he said, God, you rescued me from that. And you rescued my feet from stumbling, from those times when we really don't know what we're doing or where we're going, and we're just stumbling through life. God has rescued us from that, and that's what the psalm said here. God has saved me. He has taken care of me when I called out to him. And then he says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, we're going to get back. We're going to, you know, when you go through those times of grief, pain, and sorrow, what the psalmist is telling us here is things will get better. I, you'll get back to the land of the living. You'll get back where you feel like you can have joy again, where you feel like you can be alive again and things are going to be better. God will get you back there. You got to be patient. You got to walk with God and call upon God and God's going to take us through it. He's going to care for us. He's going to take us through that if we trust in him and call upon his name as the psalmist did. And then in Psalms 116, 15 through 17, he finishes up by saying, the death of his faithful ones is valuable in the Lord's sight. Lord, I am indeed your servant. I am your servant, the son of your female servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the, on the name of the Lord. You know, he said the death of the faithful ones is valuable. In, another, in the King James Version, it says uh, uh, the, the, the death of loved ones is, is precious in his sight. And I think God's saying there, uh, or what Psalms is saying here that uh, God, we're all valuable to God. And yes, some will come and, you know, some Christians or some people will, the trials will uh, result in death. But God is still with us there. God still loves us and he's still, we're still precious in his sight. And he's going to be with us even in the midst of that storm. And he's going to be with us there to to uh, welcome us on the other side if you know Christ, if you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. We're valuable to him. Even in death, we're valuable to him. And Lord, I am the, and he goes on to say, Psalm says, I'm your servant, Lord. I'll always be your servant. He is very thankful to God for how God has blessed him, for how God is taking care of him, and how God, how he knows that Whatever happens in his life, he can call upon the name of the Lord. He can call upon God, and God will be there to comfort him and to get him through this time, uh, to carry him, to 
to uh, console him and take him through this trial. And again, the trials may not go away, but God has a way of giving us a peace even when we're in the midst of that storm. And I know that's what the psalmist is talking about here. And he makes a statement that I'll always be your servant. I'll always be indebted to you, Lord. I'll always be thankful, as he says there, I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call upon your name, Lord. In other words, he, is, he recognizes God for what he's done in his life, and he's making sure that he's always thankful for what God has done. And doesn't take God uh, for, uh, and, you know, doesn't take advantage of God or doesn't take him uh, as if he's always going to be there no matter what I do. He's, uh, he's willing to uh, recognize God and not take advantage of God. He's, he's being thankful of God and not just assuming that, hey, you've got to do that for me. He realizes that it's by the grace of God, it's by God's mercy and grace that he's willing to love me as he loves me and care about me as much as he cares about me. And so, yes, there are going to be some times when you're going to face sorrow and grief and death and trials and troubles. If you live in life, you're going to face that. I don't care if you... Uh, just starting your teenage years, uh, if you're watching this and you're a teenager, which uh, I hope my class is watching this, and most of them would be in their teenage years, but if you even in your older years, we're going to, and the older you get, the more you're going to realize you're going to face these trials and troubles. You're, they're coming uh, uh, no matter what. Uh, we're going to face them, but we can face them so much better and get through life so much greater if we recognize that God will be with us and learn to call upon God and, and give him thanksgiving and, and thanking him for getting us through those trials and troubles and, and uh, always recognize that, that uh, we're his servants and that, uh, that he loves us and that he cares for us and that, uh, that we're, we should turn to him at all times, not just in times of trouble, but at all times. Uh, just a reminder that church services will start at 10 this Sunday morning. Uh, we've moved it back up to 10 in order to let the day warm up a little more, being the days are getting uh, colder. And uh, so we will try to uh, start two hours later than normal. So that may hopefully it'll be warm enough where uh, the preacher won't freeze when he's preaching or the others that have to be outside during that service won't uh, freeze. But And hopefully soon we'll be back in the building. But anyway, let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the comfort that you do give us. And thank you that uh, you've made us made yourself available to us that we can call upon you and that we can uh, reach out to you when we have times of trouble, Lord, that we can just open our arms and, and, and reach up to you and, and just praise you and thank you for all that you are doing in our lives, Lord. Help us to be faithful to you. Help us to be that servant that the psalmist is talking about here, that he wants to serve you the rest of his life. And then we and help us to all have that feeling and that devotion to you, Lord. And Lord, we just praise you for today. Thank you for all your blessings. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Goodbye, y'all. See you Sunday.